Welcome to ICC Kids. Have you ever tried to do something that you thought you could do but failed? I tried learning how to play the guitar once, but it was hard. Well, maybe I just need to work at it a bit more. But I'm confident that if I stick with it, I'll get better. Confidence is actually what we're talking about this summer. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Remember, God loves you. He thinks you're amazing. He thinks you're wonderfully made. He sees you as someone who can face any challenge. When you learn to see yourself the way He sees you, you can press play and live every day with confidence. I'm so ready to sing God's praises with all of you. I want to do what God wants me to do every day. I want to live out God's love and put it on display in my life. Let's celebrate and sing together. Everyone up on your feet, and here we go. On my count, let's kick it off together. Three, two, one, hit it. Come on, clap your hands. Here we go. That's it.
Awesome! It's time to go over our ICC Kids values. Our first value is love God. We love God because He loved us first. Our second value is love people. We love people because God loves all people. Our third value is have fun. We have fun because God gives us joy. Our fourth and last value is make a difference. We make a difference because Jesus did. Today we're looking at something that happened in the Old Testament long before Jesus was born. God had rescued his people, the Israelites, from slavery in Egypt. God had called a man named Moses to lead them through the Red Sea. Then God led them through the wilderness to a new land that he had promised to them. They had to learn a few hard lessons along the way. Let's just say this, it took a while for them to get there. 40 years! It took them 40 years of wandering the desert and God's people finally reached the land God had promised them. The priests carried the ark, the golden chest that somehow carried God's presence. It reminded the Israelites that God was with them. The promised land lay on the other side of the Jordan River. Just like the Red Sea, the waters of the Jordan parted and God's people were able to cross on dry ground. Word had spread about the Israelites among the people who lived in the land, the Amorites and the Canaanites. They could see that God was with the Israelites. They weren't brave enough to face God's people. In fact, they were downright terrified. Let's watch this video together to learn the rest of the story. You're the best around. Not gonna feel too good to do. Hey everybody, my name is Graham and today I'm following in the groundbreaking footsteps of my ancestors. I'm making a mixtape. You see, back in olden times, when someone wanted to listen to music, they needed one of these cassette tapes. And if you were fortunate enough to have one of these dual cassette recorders with high speed dubbing, you could put up to 90 minutes of your favorite songs onto one rad mixtape. I'm making this mixtape for my friend Erica, who's been running a lot of 5Ks lately. The Eye of the Tiger. And I'm only picking super encouraging songs, that way Erica will have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be simpler just to make a playlist that Erica could listen to on her phone? Maybe, but this is all a part of the plan. My plan is to give this mixtape to Erica so she can listen to it while she's running. She probably doesn't have a tape player, so, so she'll borrow mine. And if she carries this thing around with her everywhere, she'll build up arm strength. Oh, I didn't say it was a good plan. Oh man, another one bites the dust. Sometimes plans don't work out the way you expect. But as you'll see in today's story, sometimes there's a bigger and better plan. Oh, gotta switch to side two, I guess. How did people even survive back then? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Joshua, chapters five and six. For 40 years, God's people wandered the desert. At last, they reached the land that God had promised them. Joshua led them to the edge of the rushing Jordan River. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord. The Ark was a beautiful chest that reminded the Israelites that God was with them. As soon as the priests step into the Jordan, it will stop flowing. Sure enough, as soon as the foot of the first priest touched the edge of the river, the waters parted. God's people crossed on dry land, just as God had led them through the Red Sea 40 years before. God did this so that all the nations on earth would know that he is powerful. 
Soon after, the Amorites and Canaanites living in the land had heard what God had done. Fearful, they retreated back to their towns, including the high-walled city of Jericho. Oh, great. Like, how do we fight them now? God will show us the way. That evening, Joshua left camp and snuck toward Jericho. The walls loomed impossibly strong. So tall. As he turned, Joshua saw a man standing nearby holding a sword. Who are you? Uh, are you on our side or the side of our enemies? I have come as the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua knelt down face to the ground. What message does my Lord have for me? Take off your sandals. The place you are on is holy ground. Joshua tugged off his shoes. I have handed Jericho over to you. Joshua listened carefully as the Lord delivered a message, a battle plan unlike any other. Wow, uh, okay, uh, we'll do it, Lord. Joshua called for the priests. Get the Ark of the Covenant, and I need seven of you to march in front of the Ark with trumpets. Sorry, just warm it up. <laughs> Joshua gathered the army too. Time to move out. Like, do we get to attack now? March around the city. Just, like, go in circles? Some of you march ahead of the Ark of the Lord, and the rest of you march behind. Can we at least shout and stuff? Hey, Jericho, you guys smell like cheese! Don't give a war cry or raise your voices until the day I tell you to shout. But the priests must blow their trumpets. Forward! March! The entire army, including the priests, marched one time around Jericho, just as the Lord had instructed Joshua. Now can we get them? Back to camp, men. We march again tomorrow. The next morning, the Israelites marched around the city once again. And then on day three, once again on day four, not to mention day five, and once again on day six. We march again at sunrise. Uh, I have blisters. At dawn on the seventh day, the army and priests formed their strange parade once more. But this time, once they finished marching around the city one time, Joshua called out. Keep marching. Again? My feet are killing me. The Lord has told me we must march around the city seven times today. On the seventh time around, the priests blew a long blast on their trumpets. Now shout! The Lord has given you the city! Oh, the oh, yeah, it's As the shouts of the Israelites rang out in the clear morning air, something incredible happened. The massive walls of Jericho began to tremble. The gates shivered and quaked. Jagged cracks ran through the heavy stones. Rocks began to tumble from the tops of the walls. Little rocks, large stones, giant boulders, until at last the walls collapsed, crashing in on themselves. The ground quaked and plumes of dust burst into the air. As the air cleared, the Israelites stared in amazement. The city of Jericho stood wide open. Take the city! With nothing standing in their way, the Israelites charged right in. That day, they completely defeated the city of Jericho. God was with Joshua, and he became well known everywhere in the land. When God told Joshua to take over the city of Jericho, Joshua probably thought of a battle plan. And I bet his battle plan didn't involve marching around the city wall for a week blowing trumpets. But Joshua followed God, and the Israelites took the city. He had confidence that God's plan was bigger and better. And that's not the only time God proved his plan was better. When Jesus, God's son, died on the cross, Jesus' disciples had to wonder, what is God thinking? Then in three days, when Jesus came back to life, it all became clear. God's plan is always better. The truth is, none of us know what the future holds. Your family might have to move out of the neighborhood or out of the state. You might get sick or break a bone. You might not get put on the team you tried out for. But when things don't go according to your plan, that's when you need to remind yourself, God's got you. You may not always know what God's plan is, but keep following him and have confidence that his plan is bigger and better. That's the one thing to remember today. God's plan is the best plan.
My plan to make a mixtape for Erica is not the best plan. But it's still a lot of fun. Ah, oh. Oh no, it's unraveled. Oh wait, no worries. I've got an idea. Huh? Just like my ancestors. I'll see you next time. God was with Joshua and the Israelites that day, and word quickly spread about them throughout the surrounding lands. Everything had happened just as God said it would. I imagine Joshua and the Israelites wouldn't have come up with that exact plan if it was up to them, but they trusted the plan God gave them, and that's why they won the battle. Remember, God's plan is the best plan. We can't always see how things will work out in God's plan. When the Israelites looked at the city of Jericho, all they could see was a wall, a big one. They had to trust that God would do what he said he would do. It was the only way they could win and live in the land God had promised for them. Think about what it was like for Jesus' disciples when Jesus died on the cross. They didn't understand what God had planned, but everything made sense later after Jesus came back to life and explained why everything needed to happen the way it did. Sometimes you can only see part of God's plan. In those times, you have to trust, obey, and have faith. That's the hard part, when you can't figure it all out. Still, keep following God and living His way. You can have confidence in Him. You can trust that His plan is always best by learning our memory verse. Let's read it together. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Let's bow our heads to pray and ask God to help us trust His good plan for our lives. God, thank you for this amazing story about Joshua and the Israelites. Please help us trust you like they did. Help us trust your plans more than anyone else's. Show us your way and give us the courage to listen just like Joshua did. We know that you have the absolute best plans for us and our lives. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us today. We love seeing you here at ICC Kids. See you next week.